Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I am going to be dry aging a 17.2 pound whole New York strip loin using the Umai dry bag system. Let's get going. So here's my strip loin. As you can see, this thing is a bruiser, just beautiful, really nice fat cap on it. Whenever I'm looking for a subprimal cut like this to dry age, I always try to find one that has the least amount of trimming done to it. It's going to help us minimize some of that loss that you just naturally get with the dry age process. A little while ago, I went ahead and completely washed the outside of this cryovac bag with hot water and a bacterial soap, rinsed it thoroughly, dried it thoroughly along with my hands. What I'm going to do now is cut off the top here Go over to the sink and I'm going to drain out all this, this excess liquid, this purge liquid. Then we'll move on to the next step. For the next step, we are going to transfer this gigantic piece of meat into one of the Umai bags. And I have here the ribeye strip loin bag. Now folks, this bag is made from a special material. Basically, it bonds with the proteins of the meat and it actually allows for an oxygen exchange. It allows for the moisture in the meat to leave, but it does not allow moisture in. So if you buy the system from Umai and you also happen to buy one of the vacuum sealers, the bags that come with the vacuum sealer will not work. They're just bags. I'm saying this for a reason. I've had a lot of questions about the Umai bag not having success. This is why you have to use their bags. This stuff's magic. So I'm using what they call the clean transfer system, I think. If not, I'm going to trademark that phrase. Clean transfer. So it's still in the cryovac. I've cut the top off. I drained off as much of that liquid as I could. And now, I'm going to the end in the bag here, the open end. Clean transfer technique. I think that's what they call it. That's better than system. It's technique. Okay, so it's in the bag now. My hands are nice and clean. I'm going to grab the now closed end of the bag, of that crowd back bag, and just pull it on out. Like so. All right, we are now ready to vacuum seal the Umai bag onto the meat. And in doing this, we are going to be utilizing the vac mouse that comes with the kits you buy. And basically this is just kind of like a fibrous strip. Create some pores there so that the vacuum machine can actually suck the air out of the bag here. Because the bags you buy for vacuum sealing, they have that, you know, the textures in there that does the same thing. What we are going to do first is create a weld, a diagonal weld, and the opening will be just about as big as the vac mouse. There we go. As you can see, we have a weld going diagonally here now. So the vac mouse goes into the open end of the bag. Bag goes into the vacuum machine. We need to make sure that the open end goes into the vacuum reservoir here. Close it. Now this machine has a moist setting. If you do not have a moist setting, then I recommend at least sealing the bead twice. And here we go. I'm gonna help the bag by massaging out the air here, help the machine. There we go. We are done. So what I'm going to do now is place this in my refrigerator. I keep my refrigerator at 37 degrees Fahrenheit, 2.8 degrees Celsius. And I have it elevated on a rack, on a metal rack so that the air can circulate all around on all sides of this meat. I'm going to dry age this for 35 days. 
I will see you in 35 days. Maybe I should grow a mustache. See you in a bit. Well, see you in 35 days. That long 36 day wait is over and this is what we are left with. Dry aged New York strip loin. As you can see that Umai material is completely bonded to this meat. First thing we're going to do is peel this off. With that umai material removed, you can see we're left with a kind of a waxy, desiccated, shiny, smooth surface. No odor, it doesn't smell at all. Before I can start breaking this down and turning it into steaks, we need to remove this desiccation here. I'm just going to go as shallow as I can just to remove this desiccation. Okay, so it's getting cleaned up, slowly getting there. Now, right here, there's a back strap, some silver skin we need to remove. Actually, a lot of it was removed while I was trimming off this uh, desiccated bark. So I'm just going to try and save as much of the lean as I can. Right, looking pretty good. Now we need to remove, it's called the chain. All right, that's looking good. Now, you can see it right here. This is actually part of the sirloin and I actually saved the piece of the end that I trimmed off because of all that desiccated meat. Let me give you a nice close-up of this. So you can see right here, that gristle. So this is the sirloin right here, the New York strip loin. This gristle is extremely tough. You don't want to chew into that. So we're going to remove the sirloin piece, this uh, vein end, they call it. You can actually feel it just kind of start feeling that, that seam. You can see the seam where the gristle is, and you can see where the firmness kind of ends, and it ends right here. So we're going to cut this off. If you leave these, if you steak this out, you'll end up with steaks that sort of look like New York strips, but again, you can really see that vein right here very well. It's going to be very, very chewy, very chewy. What I'm going to do is just break this down and grind it up into some insane hamburger meat. So now it's time to start staking this bad boy out. And I'm going with about one and a half inch steaks here. And here we are, all done. So I ended up with six nice one and a half inch thick steaks, one four inch section that I'm going to slow roast to a medium rare slice. I can get two giant steaks or three decent sized steaks. And then again, this section here that I'm going to break down and grind up into some really good hamburger meat. Now, this was USDA choice meat. You can see marbling, eh, you know, I've definitely seen a lot better better steaks as far as the marbling is concerned. Some decent marbling. However, I took that choice cut and tenderized the heck out of it with that dry aging process. So I increased the value of these steaks tremendously. They're going to be as tender as a prime cut just because of what I did with the dry aging process. Stoked about that. Anyway, guys, if you're interested in this Umai dry bag process, it's easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Believe me, it's, it's foolproof, and I'm a fool. You can ask my wife. Check out the links I have below. Just sh click on Show More, and I'll have the links for the Umai stuff. Anyway, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers.